solution for critical section problem uh, okay so peterson solution for critical section problem peterson solution is for only two processes as you are aware that uh, there is not always possibility that only two concurrent processes are there in the system there are more than two but to understand the basic idea that how we can manage these concurrent processes for this only this peterson solution is in your syllabus so that you can have a better understanding uh, how uh, easily you can manage these concurrent processes so let's start uh, peterson solution is restricted to two processes that alternate execution between their critical section and remainder section how many sections are there in that code first one was entry section then critical section then exit section and then remainder section do you remember what was the entry section critical section exit section and remainder section right So what was the Peterson solution it is restricted to two processes that alternate execution between their critical sections and remainder sections. So for convenience for Peterson solution, let's present one process as PI and other one as PJ. Here J equals one minus I. Suppose I is having the value, what? Zero. Then what? is the pj pj is one means we are talking about two processes p0 and p1 pi is p0 and j is what one minus i i is zero so j is one we are only concerned about two processes in this solution so let's see uh, what are the essential things that we will need uh, so in next we see peterson solution requires the two processes to share two data items as we have seen producer consumer problem uh, what was the common variable that was the counter so here what we are sharing with two processes two data item first one is first one is int turn this is an variable which is having data type as int means it will hold integer value and the name is turn so what this turn will say the variable turn indicates whose turn is it to enter its critical section means we have designed a turn variable and this turn variable will say that who will go next to enter critical section so the variable turn indicates whose turn it is to enter its critical section and then suppose if turn value is equal to i i means what zero we are taking here for example if turn equal to zero or you can say i also if the turn is i then the process pi or p0 is allowed to execute in its critical section means turn will decide that who will go next into the critical section and another shared data item is a flag which is a boolean data type means it will hold either true value or false value and it is of array it is an array of two values because we have to store value for flag i and flag j so the flag array is used to indicate if a process is ready to enter its critical section now the two things we are using uh, one is turn and second one is flag and for example of flag suppose flag of i is true <clears throat> the value indicates that pi is ready to enter its critical section now you can see we are using two things one is flag i or flag j now if any process like pi or pj who wish to go to drink the water then it will raise the hand that i am interested to go to drink the water now if you are interested you are raising the head in the classroom and then uh, how the process will raise its interest it will set its flag value as true that i am interested to go into into the critical section to execute some processes some activities right so this is for raising your hand just uh, understand that how it works 
as you raise your hand in your classroom that uh, you wish to say something or you wish to go to drink the water just like that to give a signal to give a signal to the operating system and in the class you are giving signal to the class teacher by raising your hand that you are interested in saying something right similarly here we are using a boolean flag if i set it to true it is just parallel to raising your hand so this flag i or flag j when it is setting its value as true this give a signal to operating system that this process is wants to say something right what it wants to say something the context is it wants to go into the critical section right now what is turn turn is something uh, i can have another analogy for this turn variable why we are using this turn uh, as we know that we in lucknow we say that um, uh, in lucknow we say that pehle aap right uh, you you understand pehle aap kind of thing like in english what we say can you translate pehle aap to into english anyone as you are aware no pehle aap you know suppose uh, we are eating something then you say your friend pehle aap then yeah very good priyam after you so in english uh, yeah, we no not like you first uh, priyam is correct we english we are a little like in reverse we are talking about after you <laughs> okay so priyam is correct yeah, we uh, not use like this you first we basically say after you firstly you go then after you i will go so uh, this is what uh, this these are the manners we are having as in lucknow what only lucknow in whole india we are like that uh, that we give we are having manners to uh, give a chance to others to go first and then we will follow suppose like uh, chitranshu and priyam was there to drink the water and uh, both are standing and uh, uh, water tank is there and now uh, they both wants to drink the water but what priyam is saying to chitranshu that after you first chitranshu you drink the water then uh, i will go to drink the water like these uh, these are the manners these are the manners uh, or, or do you we do something like oh chitranshu is drinking the water and then priyam goes and push him that i will drink the water these these are not some cultured manners right is it so do you understand what is the concept of after you that you give others more respect that you go first then i will go next right do you understand after you concept yes or no do you understand yes sir okay. yes sir so now and when you understand that chitranshu and priyam both wants to drink the water but what that priyam is saying to chitranshu that after you means uh, first uh, priyam is giving a chance to chitranshu that if you are thirsty more then you can go first then i will go next similarly chitranshu is also a very mannered person right so chitranshu is also giving that chance to priyam that you can go first if you want to then i will go as you remember that story that uh, both two nawabs are there in the railway station and both were saying that pehle aap pehle aap and the train has gone right do you remember everyone is talking about those stories sir huh? so this is the thing now have this concept in operating system now what is a turn variable now uh, this uh, flag thing is individual to that process pi and that process pj right suppose chitranshu is pi and priyam is pj means i is 0 that is p0 process is chitranshu and p1 process is priyam right now these two processes both are interested to go to drink the water so they set their flag as true now chitranshu's flag is set to true and priyam's flag is set to true but who will go next who will go next both are interested for to solve this issue we are having another variable which is called turn and this turn is similar to that after you concept suppose both the processes are running concurrently so chitranshu before executing in its critical section it will ask or it will just say okay 
Priyam, if you are interested, I am giving you turn to drink the water. After you, I will go. Similarly, Priyam is doing the same thing. Priyam is setting the turn of Chitranshu by putting turn equal to I. Okay, Chitranshu, if you are interested to drink the water, you can go first. I will go next. So this is the concept. And you know, these processes are running concurrently. Means, uh, do you remember that particular producer consumer code in which we are setting that counter value with the help of three statements, right? And those statements are jumbled up. Do you remember? Do you remember that producer consumer problem in which when we are updating that counter value with the help of registers, those statements are jumbled up because we are, those processes are running concurrently, right? So uh, suppose uh, Chitranshu has executed that flag thing, then it set the turn value of Priyam. And similarly, uh, uh, like Priyam is updating its code, but uh, Chitranshu was fast. It, uh, update. He has updated his code earlier than what will happen. We will see next when we will have a code of Chitranshu and Priyam means process P0 and process P1. Let's see. Here we are having two processes, PI and PJ. And uh, you know that if we are taking I as 0, then PJ is 1. So let's see the code of pi here the, you can see flag i that means flag zero is setting to true means it is giving the signal to the operating system that i am interested to go in here where this critical section but but before going to this critical section it is giving the chance to j by setting its value to j that okay i am setting the value of chitranshu like P, p0 was chitranshu so chitranshu is setting the turn of priyam okay priyam i am set, asking you or requesting that i will go after you if um, i am setting your turn if you are interested you can go right so understand this like flag i is true means pi is interested and but it is firstly looking for pj so it put the pj turn as j and what it is here flag j now it is checking if flag j is also true and which operator is here we are using uh, this is a bitwise end or logical end can anyone tell me which operator is this bitwise end or logical end yes Logical. Logical, logical end. end, exactly. This is logical end. And what is the characteristic of this logical end? Your left hand side and right hand side both has to be true, right? Is it so? Yes, sir. Okay, so, yes, sir. so we, these both things like flag J must be true and this condition turn equal to J must be true. Then what will happen? We enter into that while loop, right? But you can see here that in while loop, we are not having any curly braces, right? and we are having one semicolon means this statement is terminated here only right so if both the condition are true suppose flag j is true and how flag j is true we are having this process pj for this now you can see here in process pj flag j is also putting its value as true you just imagine that process pj is priyam and pi is chitranshu now you can see that Priyam is also has set its value as true means it has she, he has raised his hand that I am interested to go to drink the water. But uh, Priyam is also a very mannered person. He said the turn of Chitranshu. So you can see here, he has said the turn as I. And see here, Chitranshu is a mannered person. He, he is setting the turn of J, right? And Firstly, both have given the signal that I am interested to go to the critical section, but both are asking other process, you can go first, then I will go, right? These are the things and these processes, a statement are executing concurrently. So which value last reside, it will decide who will go next into the critical section. Let's, we have a um, paint so that I can explain you this code in more mannered manner. See here, I am. I have this process PI code here, and I have process PJ code is here. Are you able to see my power and this uh, paint application? 
are you seeing yes sir okay so now what i have three blocks here i have three blocks here first one is turn this turn is shared by both the processes right and i am having this flag array i am having this flag array uh, as you aware the array is conti contiguous uh, location we have to store but for the sake of uh, understanding of this thing i have put these blocks in different places so that you can relate that flag i is relate to this code and flag j is for priyam right flag j is for priyam and flag i for chitranshu and now setup is here i will explain one by one that how you can understand this code very easily now let's start with this process pi so flag i is true let's put flag i as true uh, oh i have chosen this one okay so flag i is true let's make this block as true i am here right now uh, i am here right now i have executed this code right now flag i is true now what is next turn is j let's put turn as uh, you can write either 0 1 or uh, you can go for i and j also so i am writing here j okay and what is the characteristics of these memory cells what is the characteristics of memory cell can anyone tell me uh, we store values in container right in memory cells and what is the uh, characteristic of a memory cell can anyone tell me what is the characteristics of a memory cell who who can tell me come on what is the characteristic characteristics of a memory cell who will tell me come on anyone come on suppose this turn variable is a container right and it is holding value j right now so what is the characteristics of a memory cell anyone come on you must have studied your c language and data structure in your last year you must be aware about the characteristics of a memory cell don't say no come on tell me anyone at least this week if you are wrong i will correct you this is your routine class not any examination that i will cut your marks or anything be free and say anything it stores one bit are you sure it is stores one bit it is store values yeah good it is store values and uh, suppose if i override this memory cell then what will happen then what about old value suppose i have put here turn as q now what will happen with j is j will removed or j and q will persist simultaneously ananya is saying store information or values yeah these store information values but what is the characteristics i am asking about the thing is it can change its value will be removed yes uh, as you know that this turn is a variable and when why we call it variable because it changes its value otherwise we are having another data type which is uh, uh, is what constant you cannot change the constant like container value but we can change the value of this variable the outer value will be removed very good vasmulla this is the characteristics of a memory cell that whenever you are assigning a new value to a memory cell then old value will be removed this is the characteristic of a memory cell right so keep this in your mind so that you can have a good understanding of this code now from what we have see we have go for this flag i we have executed this flag i flag i is true and then we have executed this one turn equal to j right now similarly uh, this process is also running concurrently now flag j is true i have executed this also in parallel now let me put its value as true i have executed this statement also putting this value as true now uh, now before this pi go to this while loop what happened this process pj started executing this second statement 
process PJ is right now here. Now, what is the updated value of turn? Who will tell me? What is the next value of turn? You have assigned I to turn, right? So tell me what I can write in this turn. This turn is the common variable we are using, right? So very good. So what happened? This J will be removed. Bye bye J. You are no longer needed. And here we are having what? I. Cool. So far so good. Uh, we have executed two statement of this process PI and we have executed two statement of process PJ. Suppose again, this statement give a third statement of this process PI get a chance to execute before process PJ execute this while loop. Now come to this area. Now we are executing this while loop. What will happen? Come on, check it. This while loop is checking if flag J is true. Let's check if flag J is true. Yeah, flag J is true. Is it so? You can see here flag J is true. Come on. I understand flag J is true, right? So this condition is true. And in logical end, if first condition is true, we go for second condition to check if that condition is also true or not. Now let's check turn equal to J. Is this condition is true or false? Turn equal to J. Is this condition is true or false? Come on, tell me. False, exactly, because you can see here that turn is having the value as I and you are checking it with J. So this condition is false, exactly. So what will happen if any of the condition is false in logical end, then what will happen? We will not execute that while loop, yes? So we, we are out of this infinite loop, then what will happen? This PI is get a chance to go in its critical section. Who get the chance to go to the critical section? PI get the chance. And how PI get the chance? Because turn is set to I. By whom? By Priyam. Priyam has said the turn of Chitranshu that, okay, if you are interested and to get the water, firstly, Chitranshu is also have to set its flag as true, means he has to raise his hand and turn is set by Priyam. So in this manner, you can see here that process PI has get the chance to enter its critical section. So far, so good. Are we on the same page? Yes or no? Do you understand how process PI get the chance to go its critical section? Yes or no? So far, so good. Do you understand? Come on. Okay, cool. So this is done. If you are understand this thing, then the rest of the things are cakewalk. Let's see now. Now process PI is executing here, right? Suppose what happened at the time when process PI is executing in its critical section means process PI is here executing in its critical section. But these processes are running concurrently. You are aware, right? So what happened if what happened if this while loop is also get a chance to execute at the same time that PI who is in its critical section means Chitranshu is right now drinking the water means he is in its critical section. Now Priyam try to find out that if he can drink the water or not then how he he can find out that he can get a chance to drink the water. He will execute this code. Now what he is executing right now? He is checking if flag I is true. Let's check flag I is true. Yes, flag I is true. As you can see, flag I is true, right? This condition is true. Logical end. If turn equal to I, is this condition is true? Yes or no? Turn equal to I. You can see here, turn equal to I. This condition is also true. Now, for logical end, if left hand side and right hand side, both conditions are true, that means this while loop is what? It is returning you positive value means you can go to execute the 
while loop but you can see here we are not having any statements here in while loop no curly braces only semicolon means it is executing just like a busy waiting kind of thing it is always checking if flag i is true turn equal to i until and unless either flag i is set to false or turn is set to j till then it has to wait it is waiting okay okay flag i when you will get false and when turn equal to j right only then if any one of the condition is false then only priam can go to critical section so in this manner what will happen we have implemented mutual exclusion means right now chitranshu is drinking the water he is here right chitranshu is here he is in critical section so priam is not allowed to go to drink the water he is not able to reach here in critical section right because this semicolon is making this while loop as infinite loop it is moving and just checking condition again and again and again flag i turn i flag i turn i it is checking till then till what happen means understand priam is right now here priam is right now here now go to chitranshu's process see these processes are running concurrently so you have to switch these processes very frequently so that these process can run concurrently now we are here now we are here once chitranshu has drink the water he is done so what he will do that okay i have drink the water now i don't want to drink the water more so he set hits his flag as false so he set his flag as false right and then remainder section means that has nothing to do critical section now as you can see here as soon as chitranshu has set his flag as false what will happen priyam is here only priyam is here only he is still checking with this flag i turn i flag i turn i right now as soon as this set flag i set to false let me make it false flag i false right so let me make it as false so right now flag i is false now check this priyam is executing this code continuously uh, till that critical section was executed by chitranshu now priyam has check that flag i is true okay but not this is the case right now flag i is what flag i is false right now you can see here flag i is false now so this condition is false you will not even check this turn is i or whom right so this condition is false now priyam will get the chance to execute in its critical section because this condition is false you will not trap no, into this infinite loop and priyam will get the chance to go to the critical section so far so good do you understand how priyam will get the chance to drink the water do you understand yes or no did you get do you understand okay cool so similarly once priyam is done with its critical section he will set its flag j as false right and in this manner these pi and the pj will execute in like what in harmony <laughs> there will be no fight because before going chitranshu before going drink the water he is setting its flag to priyam and priyam is also so mannered that he is before drinking the water he is asking chitranshu would would you like to go to drink the water okay you can go first so this is the crux of this peterson solution we will discuss this in next class oh. also uh, you can have this uh, screenshot for this if you can or you can understand with this if you have uh, understanding you can do these things with your own so do, do this exercise we will discuss this again in next class if you have any doubt while revising this peterson solution then you can ask in the next class and we will go next for the other topics but in next class we will again discuss this peterson solution because this is the backbone this is your building block to go deep into the ocean if you are good with this then everything is easy in your second unit so are we good with this peterson solution everyone is on the same page do you find the crux how we are implementing this things do you get the chance now check those three things 
first one was mutual exclusion. Are we able to implement that solution? Yes, because when Chidranshu was in its critical section, Priyam was still waiting here, right? Priyam was here. He is not allowed to go in a critical section. This was what? What? Mutual exclusion. Second one was what? Progress. In progress, uh, other processes who wants to go to critical section are deciding that who will go next. As you can see here, this PI and PJ both are interested to go to critical section and they are setting and deciding who will go next. As PJ is asked, saying that I will go first and here PI is saying PJ will go next. So that is what progress in which manner both the processes are executing uh, their statement. And third one was bounded weight. In bounded weight what? There must be a cap that how many times next process will go next to the critical section. As you can see here, there is a bound on one that if PI is executing one time in its critical section, then PJ will also get the chance once PI is done in its critical section. So in this manner, we have implemented all three uh, essential features of a critical section problem solution with this Peterson solution. So.